Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video at the Pharmacist Academy! Woo! So I hope all of you are staying safe during this crazy pandemic and I hope your family and loved ones are also staying safe. Now in this video I will be discussing an introduction to suspensions calculations. Now I also have videos on compound and calculations so for IV, ointments, capsules, I also have errors and omission video. Now I'm going to include all of that down here below in the description for you guys to check out. So without further delay, let's dive in. Now a suspension is simply an admixture that contains finely divided insoluble medication particles that is distributed uniformly in a liquid that's usually viscous. And this liquid is known as the suspending agent. Now, for example, addition of amoxicillin powder, which in this case is the insoluble medication particles, to cherry syrup, the suspending agent. Now, this amoxicillin powder can be obtained from crushing the tablets to the finest particles or using the powder from a capsule. So all I'm trying to say is that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you get this powder, just make sure that the powder is in its finely divided, thinnest, form before you actually add it to the suspending agent. Now here are some characteristics of suspensions that I want you guys to take note of. The suspended powder must be uniformly sized in order to give a smooth admixture free from a gritty texture. So if I give this suspension to a child, the child should not taste any of the particles, right? They shouldn't feel any of the particles in their mouth. So it has to be very, very fine. The suspended powder must settle slowly. Now this is one of the most important features or characteristics of suspensions. When you have this powder in the suspended agent, it shouldn't settle to the bottom of the bottle right away. It should settle, but it should do this very slowly. It remains homogeneous after at least the period between shaking the container and removing the required amount. So after I shake a bottle of suspension, the powder, right, the very tiny, fine particles should not settle to the bottom right away, but instead it should be dispersed in the suspending agent until I'm ready to remove the required amount. And it shouldn't be too viscous to pour out freely or flow through a syringe. Now here are some benefits of suspensions and the main reasons why we actually use them as the preferred dosage form sometimes. It's formulated to mask the bitter taste of a drug. Now, this is the main reason why we use it a lot in children, simply because some of the capsules or tablets may have this bitter taste to it, right? This bitter coating on the outside of it. So it makes it very unpleasant for children and that will prevent them from actually taking the medication. So the suspension dosage form is meant to be formulated so that it masks the bitter taste of the drug by using suspending agents like cherry syrup, for example. It's an alternative way to administer medications to children because of pleasant taste. For elderly patients that are unable to swallow the dosage form, right, this is a good option for them also. And more drug is likely to reach the bloodstream after ingestion compared to tablets or capsules, simply because of that formulation that it's not completely in solution yet, but it's almost there, right? Compared to a capsule or tablet that must be dissolved and this and that before it actually reaches the bloodstream. So maybe not necessarily more drug will reach there, but with suspensions, it will reach there faster. Now for the people who will be taking the New York State compounding exam, or the ones that are just taking pharmaceutics, but they have recitation that requires them to, you know, compound suspensions, you will see a prescription just like this, okay? Usually you have a prescription where you have the doctor's information up top, you have the patient's information, and in the body of the prescription itself, you have the medication information, right? So the medications they want you to use in the suspension, the suspending agent, and they also have the directions. So I'll be going through each one of this. So for drug A and B, these are the active ingredients, okay? So it may give you the brand, the generic, 
whatever it is, these are the active ingredients. So it may say acetaminophen, then on the right is going to give you the amount that's required in the prescription. And this can be presented in various ways. So keep that in mind. They may give it to you as the weight. So 325 milligrams of Tylenol. They may give it to you as the concentration. So 25 milligrams of Tylenol per 5 ml. So that 5 ml is saying for every 5 ml in this suspension bottle or suspension that you have to make, you must have 25 milligrams of Tylenol in there. They may give it to you based on the patient's weight. So two milligrams per kilogram, okay? And when you do that multiplication, you're gonna get the total amount that you need for the prescription. They may also give it to you based on the directions and the prescription. Now, drug A and drug B may be available as tablets, capsules, or powder, but it doesn't matter, right? Regardless of how drug A or B is supplied, you must turn it into a powder before adding the suspending agent. If more than one drug is presented, mix the powders together to obtain a uniform mixture before you add the suspending agent. Next, we have the suspending agent. Now, here are some examples of the suspending agent. So in the real exam or prescription, they will not say suspending agent. They will actually give you a name of a suspending agent. So for example, simple syrup, cherry syrup, raspberry syrup. All of this is meant to give it that pleasant taste and also allow the fine powders to suspend through it. The amount needed in the prescription usually equals the total volume of the bottle or of the suspension that you must make. So for example, here on the suspending agent, they say QS up to 30 ml, and QS simply means bring the volume up to 30 ml using the suspending agent. So usually that means that the whole bottle must be 30 ml. Now they may simply be presented on the RX without the QS. So for example, they may just say suspending agent, then on the right it will just say 30 ml or cherry syrup, then on the right is going to say 30 ml. Now, what is the difference between when it say QS to 30 ml versus when it just says 30 ml? So for the first one, QS to 30 ml, you usually use that when you don't know how much cherry syrup you will be adding, okay? So assuming that you have some powder in a bottle, right? So really fine powder in a bottle, and all you need to add is the suspending agent now, they're just gonna say, add it to the powder and bring it up to 30 ml. But how much cherry syrup did you add? You don't really know, right? Because you have to take into account the weight of the powder. So when it has just cherry syrup and 30 ml, with that, you know exactly what you have to add. Next, we have the directions. Please review the common conversions. So for example, milliliters, two teaspoon or tablespoon. You wanna review common abbreviations. So PO, TSP, TBSP, all of that may show up in the directions and may be important in order for you to figure out how much of the ingredients you need to prepare this prescription. It can be presented as a weight also. So example, 10 milligrams every 12 hours. But on the label of the suspension, you would not put 10 milligrams every 12 hours, right? It must be in volume. So the prescription may have the weight, which will make it a little bit more challenging for you to find out how much you need in the suspension as a whole because you would need the concentration in that case, right, most likely in order to determine how much of that active ingredient that you need. It may include the total number of days for the prescription also in the directions. So one teaspoon every 12 hours for 10 days. So with this, you could determine the total volume to be prepared and dispensed. Now for the people who will be taking the New York State Compounding Exam, or if you're just taking the class, but you have recitation where you have to compound suspension, you must usually follow this procedure here. So you wanna calculate the amount of ingredients needed to compound the prescription, obtain what you need from the supplies provided to you. So they may say that you need 10 milligrams of Tylenol in this prescription. Now, how am I gonna get this 10 milligrams of Tylenol in the prescription? So during the exam, they may have a section that says available to you in the pharmacy, right? So it's basically gonna tell you the source of these ingredients, right? So 10 milligrams of Tylenol, I'm actually gonna get that from 325 milligram Tylenol capsule, right? Or 325 milligram Tylenol tablets. Next, you wanna manually compound the suspension and then label it. And then you are required to list the steps describing how you compounded the suspension, and these steps must include important keywords. 
So here's an example of some of the keywords that you must include in your procedures. And when you're grading the exam, they look for this. So for example, if you use the glass mortar, a wooden mortar, you must include it. Triturate, that's the proper term to use when let's say you're crushing a tablet, right? So as you can see here on the right, right? They're crushing, he's crushing this tablet or powder to this finest particle, okay? So he's triturating, that's what you wanna say. Geometric dilution is kind of like a fancy way of saying you're mixing two things together. So like two powders together. Levigation or wetting. So look at this pow blue powder and this glass mortar here. What you wanna do next is actually wet the powder with the suspending agent. So you wouldn't like transfer this into a bottle and then just pour the suspending agent into the bottle and have a suspension. You wanna add a little bit of the suspension here, right? You wanna kinda cover the powder. So this is what they call wetting. I think you could use the term levigation also, but I usually use that when I'm compounding ointments. But it's kind of the same concepts where you're basically placing this um, suspending agent or wetting agent on top of the powder before you continue the compounding. Next, calibrate. Okay, so in your procedure, you want to say that, for example, you pre-calibrate a 3-ounce bottle to 30 ml or whatever the case before you added everything into that, okay? So they look for that. And also QS. So here's an example of compounding procedure. So empty five capsules of amoxicillin 250 milligrams into a glass mortar. Triturate the powder. Add a small amount of cherry syrup slowly to the glass mortar with additional trituration. Step three is complete when all powder and glass mortar is wetted with cherry syrup then add water in several portions, rinsing out the mortar. Pour this into a pre-calibrated bottle. QS with cherry syrup to a volume of 100 ml. Label the product and include auxiliary labels. Very important. Since you're making a suspension, you're always going to shake it well, okay? So make sure that your label always has shake it well. And depending on the medication itself, you may require other auxiliary labels. And if you don't include this on the prescription, you're going to lose points. So in the next video, I'll be going through 10 prescriptions with practice calculations. Questions will address all the complicated things you may see with suspension calculations, and each prescription will include the compound and procedure. Now, if this video is helpful, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with your friends, classmates, or colleagues, or anybody that you know will be taking this exam. Make sure that when you find something that can help them with the exam, you also share with them. So make sure to look out for the next video. Today I gave you the baseline knowledge and also the foundation that you need to compound suspensions. And with the calculation problems, it will help you actually put that knowledge to work. Make sure to connect with me on these social media platforms. And thank you for watching this video. Take care.